Good morning, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live, and uh, at least we have some better news to report this morning. Netanyahu has knocked down the bill, the proposal, uh, that was going forth in the Knesset in order to radically alter the lives of Christians anywhere uh, around the world, living in Israel, etc., of being able to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. But sadly, what a lot of people are not aware of, though, is just how serious this has been taken uh, from the very beginning. I'm going to have my wife share a little bit about that with you before we play the news clip here from Newsmax uh, and also where uh, Joel Rosenthal uh, actually spoke about this, or excuse me, Joel Rosenberg, not Joel, Joel, Joel Rosenthal, but Joel Rosenberg, where he spoke about this uh, bill and why it is so serious at this time, because many people don't realize that the very man proposing it is part of Netanyahu's own coalition now. In the past, when he proposed it back in 1999, he was not part of Netanyahu's coalition. Yana, share some of this with every uh, listeners here on Israeli News Live. Well, why was it taken so seriously is exactly why you, Steve, are saying that ultra-religious Talmudists have taken over the country of Israel right now. Those are in power. Mr. Gvir, with his past uh, known as being against Christians, wanting Christians out of the country. So now this Mr. Moshe uh, Gaff, I think his name is Gaffney. Mr. Moshe Gaffney, who in 1999 proposed similar bill. At 1999, it just basically didn't go through. But right now, it was very dangerous. Everybody was in uproar. Uh, Christians in Israel were afraid simply because there is a very serious situation in Israel right now. As we have been reporting, country has been protesting. Uh, they are losing democracy. Their secular courts are weakened and the rabbinic courts are getting into power. And we know that the base of Judaism is Talmud. And we know what Talmud teaches about Jesus. We know how Talmud feels about Christians. So this was a very, indeed, very, very serious thing, uh, very serious news. Now, what I am really happy about is that how some evangelical leaders, not all, but some have stood up against this and Netanyahu has backed down immediately. So this is good because, you know, Steve, this yeah. is this is the job of Christians here on earth right now. We are the citizens of heaven who are ambassadors for Christ's kingdom here yes. on earth. And this is our war and we are to watch out for our fellow Christians even in Israel. So if you don't put your voice out there, and if you That's don't right. do nothing, the kingdom of Pharisees will take over very easy. But we are here as the opposition, and that's why our voices are mega serious in this. And we have to voice it, we have to warn, and we have to prevent uh, from this ultra-nationalist coalition in Israel to persecute our brothers and sisters in Israel and prevent from gospel going out. Well, you know, the thing is, too, uh, Saman Tov uh, has already expressed to me privately, and we're going to have him on, uh, just how dangerous uh, this coalition that Netanyahu has for yes. the believers that live in Israel. So it is a real serious issue, and the only thing that does change things is when people do speak out. Yes. If you wait and speak out after everything's already said and done, well, one day, if we all did that, they would actually pass it. Right. I mean, some people forget, Yana, that Netanyahu actually stated in a private meeting that was videotaped, he wasn't expecting it, I guess, to get out publicly, speaking in Hebrew, but he says Christians were useful idiots. Right, and later it was like, Later, they said online it's not true. However, it was true. It was just scrapped off of the Yeah, I actually, we've watched the video. We know it's true. Mm -hmm. I've listened yes. to it. Uh, he's so. sitting in the living room of somebody's home. I think it was over in the West Bank, uh, and he made that statement. Yeah, he doesn't want that to get out. But the thing okay. is, is right now, I mean, Netanyahu has been maybe the better prime minister when it comes to uh, the Christian people, but at the same time, he has, in order to get back in power, he has aligned himself with the ultra-Orthodox right. Uh, so when we say it's only the right 
that is doing this, that's how he made his coalition. And his coalition would fall apart unless he concedes to some of their demands. Right. So let's take a look at what Newsmax was saying about it. And I think Joel Rosenberg, and I've actually, we met Joel Rosenberg many, many years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, maybe we get Joel to come listen. on as well. Let's listen into this. Netanyahu to stop a bill proposed by members of his coalition to make it criminal to tell people about Jesus in Israel. Our Jerusalem correspondent Daniel Cohen is live near Tel Aviv with more. Good morning, Daniel. Good morning, Allison. Good morning, everyone. A big story just before, uh, days before Palm Sunday, Good Friday, and Easter. Sacred time for Christians. Two ultra-Orthodox members of Prime Minister Netanyahu's coalition have introduced a bill that would punish believers for sharing the gospel of Jesus with prison time. United Torah Judaism Knesset members Moshe Gaffney and Yaakov Asher introduced legislation last week making it illegal to share in conversation or produce content online, in print, or by mail. Their explanation of the bill emphasizes a warning to stop Christians in particular. The punishment, one year in prison or two years for sharing with someone under the age of 18. Joel Rosenberg is the host of the Rosenberg Report and editor-in-chief of All Israel News. He's also a Jewish follower of Jesus. Obviously, Jewish people don't agree with Christians, evangelicals or others, about who Jesus is, right? We all know that there's a theological difference, but evangelical Christians and, and other Christians have been so supportive of Israel and the Jewish people. So to silence, to muzzle and gag even Israelis like myself and others to say, you can't talk to another person about your faith and why you believe it, that is terrible. That is not freedom. Although he doesn't agree theologically, Netanyahu has always been a strong friend of evangelicals, speaking at meetings and believing freedom of speech and freedom for Israel's small Christian community uh, should be protected. Now, should the now the question is, though, is how long will that protection last? Because if the ultra-Orthodox get in power, which they are in power with Netanyahu now, and let's just say for some reason that the coalition fell apart and they begin to rebuild again, next time it might be only the right-wing ultra-Orthodox that get in power. This is one of the great fears that we're seeing, Yana, with even uh, the rest of Israelis and why Israelis and the tens of thousands, even over 100,000 in the street protesting Netanyahu's it was coalition. It a million, Steve, in Tel Aviv. Okay, oh we, we're talking enormous amounts of people protesting because there are secular courts that kept balance uh, with the religious laws in Israel and police force in Israel, and they kept this balance, and people could always turn to secular courts for justice uh, right. when they felt like injustice has been done to them by religious courts. And now this is being weakened, and it has passed in Israel, so there is a lot of fear of losing basic rights and democracy in many, many spheres. I was, I was talking on Odyssey about this women's rights issue as well. So, yes, this time around, it was a real scare. Now, this time, uh, Netanyahu has called it off, which is a great news. Guardian has reported it, I think, or I, I think that's what they're reporting today, this morning. But... Um, how long exactly? How long is this going to last? If they get stronger and stronger, will it eventually pass? Because we see what their intention is. We see how they feel about Christians. We see what, what their right. intention is. Okay? Right now, it's just a political move due to a backlash. But how long is it going to be okay for Christians to preach. Exactly. And I can't, I can actually answer part of that question uh, for you, because one of the things that I've heard quite frequently is that they're waiting for a cataclysmic events to happen. In other words, wars are uh, mainly wars to totally decimate different countries around the world, global economic meltdown, etc. Uh, we're seeing more and more they're going to different banks are being nationalized, as we've already reported as well. And once they, that, that full takeover is done and the world is in such a chaos and the people are crying out for someone to be the savior of the world, I believe this is when you're going to see the Antichrist figure rise on the scene. Uh, I believe this is when you're going to see that the, that the people then will accept whatever they can get to get some peace 
and quiet in the world. And and I've reported before, Israel, it's already been spoken about in the circles in, in Washington that Israel will be the head of the New World Order. Uh, so, so I fully expect that eventually what some people, you know, deem as conspiracy theories will actually be real mandated laws. And I know eventually we're going to share a video on that yes. and show, I mean, right at the United Nations, the Poway rabbi, everything bringing this out, you know, that, you know, that the, 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 the world has got to adopt the seven Noahide laws. Every president of the United States, for example, it's been resigned has by all been signing states, right? that they recognize the seven laws of Noah as the foundation of this, uh, nation. Of this nation. And yet, this nation was never founded on the seven laws of Noah. Yeah, and if uh, people call it conspiracy theory, they must be extremely uneducated in this fair, uh, in this area. Okay, educate yourself truly what's happening, what is in a public law, 10214. Yes. Why is it education law? Why is it coming through the education? Why is it even American law system? Why are politicians always surrounded with Chabad rabbis and signing Schneerson birthday every year and talking about Noahide laws. Why are they allowing Chabad rabbis to pray in uh, in Congress and mentioning and, and invoking to be a the name Christian of Shirson nation. and Noahide laws? Right, exactly. So please educate yourself on this before you listen to people who say that this is just a conspiracy theory. Yeah, because undoubtedly that conspiracy theory has gotten some very deep teeth in many presidents in this nation. It has made it all the way to the United Nations. It has made it to many different world leaders around the world that also have adopted that and accepted it just as the United States has done. So uh, it is definitely growing. Uh, it will be in the future. And, and we'll, we'll play the different prominent, prominent rabbis Yes. That are that have called upon these things. Uh, the Mitzrahi out of New York. Et right, the New Testament is telling us mm -hmm. to expose the works of darkness. And that's exactly right. And, and if that's we what don't the do it. the Qumran community wrote in the Dead Sea Scrolls that the rabbis, the Pharisee rabbis that were controlling uh, Israel. 2,000 years ago, and Jesus called them serpents, but they called them the sons of darkness. Mm -hmm. well, we Think can do about it. In the free court on this. All right. Thank you guys for listening. It is a good news, though, that the proposal was knocked down. Uh, and so I applaud all of the, the ministers and the ministries and, uh, and the news agencies that brought this out to light to help put the pressure on yes. Netanyahu so it did not slip through the cracks. Have a great day.